Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Let's Play Shining Force. I'm Craig Stern, and here we are right outside of Dragonia, the land of the sacred dragons, where a very special sacred dragon named Blue, he's just a baby, he's friends with some people in Rudo, mainly children, he is in danger from Cain of Runefast. We're here to leap to his rescue, and that is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So, as you can tell from the music, uh, things aren't going so well here. In spite of the fact that there is a shopkeeper just randomly hanging out here. No deals, as usual. Um, you might notice I have less money than usual, and that is because I decided I was finally going to suck it up and upgrade everyone's steel lances to chrome. Because, let's be honest, uh, those steel lances really weren't doing that much. They only did, like, three more damage than the power spears. Just wasn't that impressive overall. Um, you might also notice that Henri and Dao have been promoted from level 15 and 14 mages, respectively, to level 1 wizards. That doesn't actually change all that much for them, other than making their stats slightly worse for a while. It does give them access to some better weapons, but that doesn't matter too much because they're mages. The main thing is, and I'm a little ashamed to admit that this is my motivation, but whatever. I'll just come out and say it. They just look so, so much cooler in their attack animations once they're promoted. I just kind of wanted to show you how cool they look, mainly. Ooh, a halberd. That almost makes me feel kind of stupid for buying three chrome lances when I could have uh, simply waited to get this halberd. Halberds are awesome weapons. I'm going to give this one to May. They're really, really excellent. Uh, they deal a ton of damage, and if you use them, they cast Bolt Level 1. This will be the first time you'll get to see a Bolt spell in action in this game. And I don't think you're going to be disappointed, because Bolt is a pretty cool spell, even in its Level 1 incarnation. Yep, I'm just going to the house. And, ah, who's this? We were apparently followed by a kid. Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> Worst dragon ever. <laughs> and that is some really aggressive pushing Buffon out of the way. More so than pretty much any character we've seen so far. Ooh, Shower of Cure. That is the kind of shower I like to take in this game. It's like a shower of healing and goodness. Let's see, what else did I do? Oh, I finally gave Chris the, uh... Finally gave her the Holy Staff because of the very reasons I outlined in the last episode. See, what's really funny about that is, at no point in the game does Blue ever actually spew fire. Even when he's promoted and he finally gets a breath weapon, all he does is use this weird lightning breath attack. And he's going to join the Shining Force. Very nice. I'm not sure I'm going to use him, because he kind of needs to be leveled up to be any good. And... I'm not sure I'm going to have the opportunity to level him up enough to make it worth my while. Oh, and look who's here. This guy should look familiar. Yeah, that's right. It's Kane of Runefast. 
Sweet. I've always wanted to meet my Doom. I hear about it so much, but I've never had a chance to actually talk to it face to face. This will be a fabulous opportunity. Incidentally, uh... Oh, look at that. This door will open only for two heroes, huh? Well, I guess that is going to take someone other than just Buffon, because Buffon is only one hero. Yes, that's right. I can do math, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Bakken, um, you're not the brightest light, are you? I mean, aside from the fact that you're clearly blocking my way over to that treasure chest. Which, incidentally, I'd really appreciate it if you stopped doing. In fact, get out of the way. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, a broadsword. Now, if I were still using Valderoy, I would equip him with that immediately, because broadswords are pretty good. Even more so than steel swords. Check this out. It's only a four-point increase, but that matters a lot when you're dealing with enemies that already have, like, you know, minimum 28 defense. Yep, so that's pretty much all there is to Dragonia, other than the battle that we are about to fight against Cain of Runefaust. Oh, and there's a priest just hanging out down here for no particular reason. How can you help me? Well, you probably can't help me, priest. Because I'm about to fight Cain of Runefast. And you're pretty much useless. So, one other thing I did. By the way, look how much cooler they look. Their little battle sprites. They have little uh, spiked shoulder pads now. Uh, one other thing I did while I was busy retooling is I gave Ken's Power Ring over to Lyle. I'm hoping that that will help him to level up during this particular battle. He has pretty good power to begin with, but, you know, every little bit helps when you're dealing with uh, someone who needs to be leveled. And the battle begins. Yep, I remember he killed Varios. That might mean more to me if I knew more about how powerful Varios is. I mean, you know, you can't exactly do a throw, pull a throwing wharf, as they say in on TV trips. You can't exactly pull that if you don't first establish that that character is supposed to be really, really tough. Oh, what's this? Oh, I forgot about this. There's some gargoyles up there that need to be dealt with. Send some people to do that. I haven't decided who just yet. I think Domingo may have to be one of them. It's Dao's first attack as a promoted wizard. Look how cool she looks. She looks like some kind of crazy medieval Michael Jackson, almost. Also, look at how her staff floats. That is super, super awesome. So I'm pretty sure that line of golems never actually budges. I'm pretty sure they just kind of stand there. the Gargoyle wasted his turn, doing absolutely nothing to me. Good job, Shining Force. Good job. As you can see, we have two Durahans to deal with in this battle, in addition to Master Mages, High Priests, and a whole bunch of Golems. Although, incidentally, we have fewer Golems to deal with than we did in the previous battle, so it's actually not as bad, in a way. Yeah, 
Henri looks even cooler than Dow, because she's in all black. That's just how it works, folks. But they both kind of have the same pretty sweet outfit at this point. And that makes me happy. Let's see. I don't want to advance on those golems just yet, because I want to take care of those gargoyles first. It looks like they're just gonna sit there, which, uh, you know, probably not the best tactical move. I'm not really sure why they're choosing to just hang out up there, but I'm sure they have their reasons. This will be a good opportunity for me to use the halberd and show you bolt level 1, which is super, super cool. Check this out. Yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty awesome spell. And the halberd is a pretty awesome weapon for letting you cast it in spite of the fact that it's already at risk of breaking. For obvious reasons, I am not going to be using Bolt 1 with the Halberd again until I have a chance to get it fixed. for Gong to strut his stuff a little. Nice little double attack there. Nets him a cool 42 experience. That will give Henri a chance to finish off the second gargoyle. As you can see, we're not experiencing the same uh, problems we did earlier in the game when we promoted our guys in the battle, or I guess prior to the battle against General Elliot, where people were getting relatively little experience from killing the same enemies that they were getting plenty of experience from killing just before. I think this has something to do with the fact that, at this point in the game, it's expected that you'll have promoted your characters. So the game isn't going to give you an experience penalty. Let's try to get Dao and Henri down here before we launch our offensive against that line of golems. As you can see, he can actually reach behind that line, which makes him extremely useful here. He's uh, leveling up. It's a pretty solid level up, too, particularly considering that he hasn't been promoted. But the High Priest goes and undoes it almost immediately, albeit by wasting a huge chunk of magic points. Heal level 3 would have accomplished the same thing, and at a fraction of the cost. Again, not the best AI. This is a good opportunity for Domingo to launch a nice little AoE from higher ground. Let's have him do it. Unfortunately, there aren't any actual elevation effects in this game. 
All that really does is make sure that he is well out of harm's way. Let's have May finish off his golem here. A nice hit from May, and she levels up. Holy cow! Eleven hit points. That is really impressive stuff. That is by far the most hit points of anyone on my team right now. I think Ken might be able to finish off this golem. Let's make sure he's equipped with the... Yes, he is. He's equipped with the Chrome Lance. Let's see what he can do. He might just do four damage to it, actually. Let's find out. Oh, six. Okay. Better than expected. Not too shabby. This is arguably pretty risky, but... <laughs> I think it's worth it. I want Gord to use his Heat Axe, like so, and finish off that Master Mage on him. Oh, no, that won't finish him off. But it will significantly weaken the whole group. And the High Priest won't be able to heal everyone. doesn't have aura. This is going to be painful. Yeah. Alright, let's see. It's really important that we finish off this Master Mage up here, because he is in a position to hit Ken. AoE attack, and I do not want that to happen. Xylo once again proving useful, and the enemy AI once again proving kind of stupid. Let's see. Hmm. What is Chris's attack with this thing? 35. That's pretty good. Theoretically, she should be able to do something. If I could just feed her a weakened enemy, that should be pretty good for her experience points. I know Chris isn't that far from learning heal level 3 at this point, and I am just chomping at the bit for her to learn it. Unfortunately, she needs a fair bit of experience before that becomes viable. Hopefully we can make it happen pretty soon. And the High Priest doesn't heal anyone! Wow, that's stupid. Alright, well, that'll give Kokichi a chance to take him out, perhaps. Let's see if he does. going to finish the job. A little concerned about leaving him in range of that Master Mage, though. Maybe it might be a smarter move to have him finish off the Master Mage instead. I'm not sure if he will, but let's give it a shot. Ooh, yes he does. That's a nice shooting, Lyle. And true to his name, I love it. Get it because it's like, Lyle well, love it. Never mind! That was a bad joke. We're going to attack this Golem with Buffon and deal some pretty significant damage. The broadsword brings his attack up enough that he can deal a pretty hefty blow to that Golem there. Now, Domingo can launch a pretty successful AoE from this vantage point, but I kind of want Omri to do it because I think she is pretty close to learning Freeze Level 3. And that is important to me, that she learns it.
as you can see, golems do not mess around. They deal pretty heavy damage. Luckily, Zylo can take a couple hits. Even if he can't seem to dish them out. Here's a good chance for Chris to gain some experience. Phew! That was a pretty hefty blow, no less. Gone. Use your special healing magic on Zyla. And we'll take it from there. With both the priest and all the master mage is gone. Golems are pretty much just sitting ducks. There's nothing they can do. It's just their pure physical attacks. That really concerns me in any way. Hmm. Zylo's attack is really lagging. He really needs a good level up. Vaughn's defense is so high at this point that even the golems can't really seem to do too much to him. Which is going to make it pretty hard for me to lose this battle. Unless... well, I shouldn't say that because the Durahans have really high attack. And so does Kane, for that matter. More importantly, Kane has the Sword of Darkness, which pretty serious. That was a really good level up for Omri. Her uh, defense just shot right up. What does that put her at? Defense of 14. Not amazing, but uh, pretty good for a mage. Let's look at Kane's stats here. Attack of 65. That is not an attack level that you want to mess around with. Um, as you can see, he's equipped with the Sword of Darkness. And... What is there to say about the Sword of Darkness? It has an instant kill special attack. If you use the Sword of Darkness on someone, it casts a spell called D-Soul, which does pretty much what you'd expect it to do. It removes a character's soul, and they just drop dead instantly. It is not a fun spell to be subjected to. Luckily, it doesn't work too terribly often. I think there's maybe a 1 in 2 chance of it working. that put him at. Okay, still not amazing. Zylo really needs a better level up if he's going to uh, keep up with the rest of the force, but he's just kind of barely hanging on right now. Ken is going to stay put, and me is going to move around and join Gort. Meanwhile, this golem is going to flail away uselessly at Buffon. Here's a chance for Henri to gain more experience, and hopefully put her a little bit closer to learning Freeze level 3. Because, let me tell you, once she learns Freeze level 3, she becomes a Hellion on the battlefield. Just absolutely devastating. I'm also pretty eager for Dow to learn Blaze level 4, but that's not as crucial. Lyle, I think, is going to 
set up at the bottom of that cliff and just fire shots up onto the platform above. That is where he will be most useful. And where he will also be at the lowest risk of getting his ass killed. Which is, of course, something we don't want happening. Ass killing is a serious, serious disease, and it's one that we should not subject our Shining Force members to. I guess I should say it's a serious condition. It's not really a disease, so... How about you? I was a little disappointed when I got here and I was like, this is Dragonia? It's just, it just kind of looks like a town. I mean, it's kind of a cool looking town as a town goes, but it doesn't really look like a place that was ever inhabited by dragons. That's all I'm really saying. And that High Priest is not even going to try to heal the Master Mage. It's a little questionable. Not what I would do if I were him. Silo, unfortunately, is probably not going to be participating in the main push here, just because he's a little too weak. His promotion was a little too recent, and I just haven't had the chance to level him up enough to make him a viable participant. What I think I'm going to do is have Chris cast Quick someone, maybe Kokichi, and have them lead off the charge. In fact, I'm going to do a quick save state here, because if there is one thing I don't want happening, it's Kane coming up and using the Sword of Darkness on Buffant and desouling him, because that would be a horrible end to the battle. On the plus side, Lyle just had a nice little level up, and now he's ready for permission. Maybe what I should do is hypercast real quick on the font. That might be the better move. In the meantime, Henri can certainly cause a little havoc. Wait a minute, she has freeze level 3? Oh man, how did I miss that? Woo hoo hoo hoo! Folks, I am excited. Uh, she only has enough magic points to use it once, but. Alright, I'm definitely going to show you this at some point during this battle. Probably pretty soon, but I want to make sure I don't use it until I'm certain I can take out that High Priest, because I don't want him using his healing magic and undoing all the good I do with Freeze Level 3. Although, looks like I'm going to have to use some magic if I want to get anywhere against these Durahands. The Heat Axe is probably a good start. This port once again just laying waste to the enemy. Look at Kane, by the way. Tell me he doesn't look awesome. Not a great level up, but uh, it'll do. It's good enough. Gets the job done, as it were. May, meanwhile, is just absolutely kicking butt with that halberd. And that is what I like to see. Kokichi. I really want to sneak him around the back and finish off that high priest. But it might not be necessary. Because I might be able to take him out by having Henri use freeze level 3. I'm going to cast Quick on Buffant here, so that he is not at risk for getting killed. Except through Desol, but hopefully Desol won't work on it. Because that would be a cheap way to win the battle. 
You hear me, game? It would be cheap. I stand by that. I don't want Dao getting killed just yet, because I kinda need her magic to help out against these Durahans. That was a nice hit from Dao. And she levels up. And she's learned to spell. You know, weirdly, I can't actually remember what Dispel does. I think it might maybe undo negative status effects, other than poison. I don't know. It's been quite a while. I don't remember actually using Dispel that much. But I guess that's kind of useful. Oh boy. Vort just barely hanging on to life after that horrible attack from the Durahan. While I might just have to sacrifice on the altar of uh, getting rid of that high priest. No. This is not a great situation to be in. I'm probably going to have to move someone up there to help out because uh, they do not have enough support at the moment. I guess I'll stick with Font here, but. I'm just going to quick save again, because I really, 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 really do not want him getting diesel. Oh, look at that. Kane just made it easy for us by not doing anything at all. That's handy. Gort, I'm just going to have retreat over there for a minute, until he can be healed. Dow, why don't you just run over there, since Kane apparently isn't going to move. See, he'd be much more effective attacking with the Chrome Lance. But I'm afraid that Duran is going to just absolutely slaughter him. Well, whatever. We'll give it a shot. Oh yes, much more effective. Worth it? Well, I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. And with the last bit of our magic points, Chris heals Gord a little. I would really like it if she would gain higher maximum magic points. I feel like that would be a really good thing for her to do. Just in general. I'm gonna move May over here. And is that... Is Omri able to reach from there? Freeze three. Oh, she is not. That is awful. What about here? Oh my god. Disaster, folks. Disaster. Luckily, the High Priest, well, I guess it's maybe not luckily, depending on your perspective. The High Priest is basically out of magic points now, so that's good. On the downside, though, he's broken formation, which means that I'm not going to be able to hit all three characters with AoE anymore. Oh my god. I was hoping maybe I could uh, make it worthwhile to send Xylo up there by finally taking that guy out, but he went and evaded. So that is going to be a largely futile effort. And now I'm really glad I cast Quick on Buffon. That paid off. That is a nice hit from Lyle. Very impressive. Alright, Kokichi, I think, should be able to hit this guy. That's fine. He only has enough in him for a single heal one. And that is not something to be too concerned about. Is Buffon going to kill this guy in one hit? I don't know. Let's find out. And yes he does. Just barely. That gets him some nice experience. Xylo, I'm afraid, is not going to survive this attack. Oh, he's using the Sword of Darkness. 
that was not the best thing Kane could have done. Because I'm pretty sure just a normal attack would have killed Xylo in a single hit there. Alright, Domingo, why don't you uh, help out with this really annoying High Priest here? By the way, I don't know if you noticed, his name is spelled differently in the battle than it is in all the uh, text, which I find really weird. I can't think of why they would have done that, other than, I guess, just poor proofreading on their part. Alright, down. That's not enough to finish that guy off. Yeah. Blaze 3. Let's end this, this nonsense with the High Priest here, so we can focus exclusively on Kane. Blaze level 2 might have been enough to finish him, but I just wanted to be sure. I guess maybe they just wanted to spell it the biblical way, just in case you had any doubts about how you were supposed to feel about this guy. Although, dear god, look at that portrait. It almost looks like some kind of crazy demon insect thing. I have a feeling Xyla is going to deal one damage to this guy. Hopefully that's not the case, but we'll have to see. Yep. And he got one experience for it. A hundred more of those, and he'll gain a level. Well, 98. Close enough. Now, is there a treasure chest in there? I feel like maybe there is. Nope, just my imagination. Though there is one over there. Maybe I should send Kokichi over there to get it. Because he certainly isn't going to do a whole lot against Kane. I'll tell you that right now. Alright. You know, I almost don't want to use Freeze level uh, 3 here because it's not a good use of our magic points. I'm going to start off with Freeze level 1 and then maybe use level 3 if it becomes a good idea later on. Yeah, as you can see, Kane, like many other big deal type bosses in this game, is resistant to magic. So you really need to spell, like, Blaze level 4 if you want to do serious damage to him. Or Freeze level 4. I think Lyle might be able to get somewhere with him, let's see. Not too shabby. 7 points of damage. He's gonna move Buffon down one space, so he's out of range of the Sword of Darkness. Unfortunately, it looks like that also coincides with the end of the quick spell. Yeah. There goes, there goes Gort. That's a, that's a pretty unwelcome development. I did not want Kane to do that, but, you know, Kane plays by his own rules, folks. He is a bad, bad man. Bad Batman who doesn't get many experience points, incidentally. A little surprised by that. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna show you Freeze level 3. It's basically like the other Freeze spells, but with even bigger stuff. Bigger stuff. You know, little frost thingies. Yeah, you know, stuff. It's the technical term. The 
main thing that makes it so awesome is... Not that you could tell there, but uh, it deals pretty serious damage. In addition... ...to having pretty awesome range. And if he dealt... You know, if he gave more experience points for being hit, I might have Chris go in and take a whack at him, but I don't think it's worth it. I think Buffon should be able to survive a single attack here. Oh dear, he cannot. That is bad. Luckily, I saved Sting. So, we're only going to have to redo a little bit of this. And already, it's looking like he's uh, taking a different tack. Luckily, one that doesn't kill May, because that would be really bad if May died. Who boy. Alright. What are we going to do here? I will have Gordon use the heat axe on those guys. Soften them up a little. Yeah, that was a bad idea. I probably should have just ended this battle and had the chance. I'm sorry for making you sit through more of this. But I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to end this as quickly as possible. Feel good, Gort. Not having all that little fairy dust on you. I kind of like to know how medicine is practiced in this world. They just sprinkle essence of fairy on everyone who's sick. I'm not sure that I have coke time to have Kokichi go grab that chest, but in an ideal world, I would like for that to happen. It looks like he's just attacking Mei. Oh no, he's using the Sword of Darkness. My bad. Ugh. Oh, Kane, you dick. Alright. It's cool. It's cool. We're still gonna win this. Just gonna have to try a little harder to box him in. Dao has no experience, or sorry, no magic points left, which means she's probably not going to be doing too much here. Gort has the heat axe, and that'll actually help a little, so we'll have him use it. Yep, and that's the last time we can use that without repairing it.
Kane is down to a mere two hit points, folks. This is looking pretty good. If Zylo does a double attack, this battle is over. But he does not. Have Chris use the last for magic to heal Gord. We'll continue with this uh, beat down of Mr. Kane. Looks like it may go to Lyle here, folks. Unless Kane evades. And he does not. Lyle bags him. Wins one for the shiny horse. <laughs> uh, someone with even worse hair than Buffon, folks. Oh, so Darksaw masked his face to control him. That's pretty weird. So, in case that really obvious hint didn't register with you, we're supposed to go to the shrine again because of stuff that's in it, or something. You'll find out in just a second. First, I want to see if that chest is still there. Oh no, it's just the chest we already opened with Bakken. So, no harm, no foul. I don't think we lost anything there. The door opens for two heroes who come forward and show the way. So, clearly we have Buffon, who's won, and oh, what's this? Kane's back alive again? And here we have it, folks. Kane is actually the second hero, which is pretty weird. Oh, but what do you know? Here's Dark Soul again. So, you get two guesses what happens there. Here's a hint. If Kane won, the game would be over. So, that isn't it. Anyway, um, that's pretty much the end of that. There is more to come in this chapter, however. Things aren't over. And we'll be seeing more of what's to come in the next episode. Thank you for watching Let's Play Shining Force. I have been Craig Stern. I'm still Craig Stern. I hope you enjoyed watching. I enjoyed playing. I will see you all in the next episode.